All right, guys, Red here. Today we're going to be doing another 10 things that you didn't know about Star Citizen. Probably. And right off the bat, let me just say, if you've played Star Citizen for a long time, then I might not catch you out this time. But the deal is, same as the last time, if there's one thing on this list that you didn't know, then you have to leave a like, possibly subscribe. And if you knew everything, then you leave an 07 in the chat. So let's get on with it. Okay, this first one is going to be a bit of a two for one because it's pretty basic stuff. But if you ever get this area two cluttered message showing up, just put it in your hand and then go into first person, look at it and drop it using the menu. Pretty useful if you try to loot bodies or something like that. Part two of number one, if you ever need to get all your armor off quickly, just double click an undersuit and then drag the undersuit off. So if you follow the tram lines down from New Babbage Spaceport till you get to the Aspire Grand, this tall building in the middle here, and then turn to a heading of 350, you'll eventually come to this rooftop that looks pretty messy. This is an easter egg left over from the Whitley's Guide 2951 IAE Special, where Jacks tried to recreate a painting using an Aegis Redeemer's thrusters as a paint gun, I guess. The painting on the platform here also has its own lore associated with it. It's called the 2610 Tears of Fire painting and it represents an image from the Second Tavaran War. There's an entire page about this painting in the Spectrum Dispatch section of the RSI website. Do a little bit of that at the bottom, finish that off, there we go. Jack Smurg Cleary. Ha! Most people know that if you click place and then look up a bit you can throw an item. But did you also know that you can also underarm throw an item by holding right click? Similarly, if you just hold left click you can throw an item. And then if you hold left click and then right click you can under throw an item as well. And this can be done whilst running. Shooting these blue and red gas canister carryable boxes in the game with ballistic weapons will do nothing. But if you shoot them with any kind of laser fire, they give off a nice little explosion. I have no idea what this could be useful for. Some people have suggested that it would be good for blowing up drugs, but they will do a reasonable amount of damage to an armoured player. Okay, so say you've been in a bit of a scrap and you've lost one of your thrusters. Now you're going to have severe issues with torque imbalance. And you'll see that when you try and go anywhere, you'll veer off, in this case, to the left. And even in VTOL, you'll start to tip over. What you want to do is you want to come to this power MFD and try and balance the load. So in this case, I'm looking for the right main thruster and I'm going to turn that off then I'm going to go into decoupled mode so that I drift and I'm going to deploy my landing gear. This will put us into vector hold mode from the last video where the ship will basically maintain a course on its own and you just point it where to go. And then using boost you should be able to make it pretty much anywhere and get yourself repaired. And that's you, home safe. Did you know that this is an interactable radar? You can use the WASD keys to move things around and the mouse to grab it and rotate it and things like that. It's also pretty handy in combat as well if you need to lock a target that's behind your ship. Some of the emotes in the game only really work if you have a gun in your hand. These tactical hand gestures can be assigned to the same keys that hold normal social emotes and they cover things like move right, move left, move forward, hold, disagree and agree. I've got a feeling most of you will know this one, but you can access the local inventory of any station as long as you're inside the armistice zone. This means that you could quickly fly through the space around the station and switch out your gear. So if you store things in a specific way that are tailored to suit each kind of job, you could just fly through and swap out your gear for whatever next job you have lined up. This also works for planet side outposts etc. 
Okay, let me see if I can get you this time. Did you know that you can assign your own landing pad? As long as your ship will fit the pad and it's not occupied, if you fly up to a landing pad and then request landing, it will assign the pad that's right in front of you. Once more, just for science. Okay, last but not least, and this is more of a workaround this one, but it's been in the game for quite some time. Before you land for a restock, it's sometimes a good idea to set off a few flares. This somehow seems to trick the station into giving you missiles again. In the last video we looked at this artist's room and how it related to a story called A Gift for Baba. And I had a lot of people in the comments saying, but you didn't touch on Benny Henge. So by popular demand, we're going to do Benny Henge. So in this room you find a tablet and on the tablet is a diary of an artist who's using Big Benny's noodles as a narrative, let's say, on consumerism and corporate interests and capitalism etc etc but also found in security outpost korea is another tablet that mentions a guy and lots of missing big benny's vending machines so tying those two clues together a few years back on varaday would have led you on a treasure hunt to the asteroids around yela which eventually culminated in you finding benny henge to find benny henge you're going to want to start at grim hex and head to yela then you're going to want to head to Nakamura Valley Aid Shelter. From there, turn around to face Grim Hex and find OM6. You're looking for a big set of rocks near OM6. Fly out to that big set of rocks and you're looking for the biggest one there. Once there, turn around, lock on Yela and fly away until your distance reaches 641. Then you're going to want to target Grim Hex and fly towards it until you get to a distance of 254.8 then target Yela again, manoeuvre until the distance is 641 then look down and on that big asteroid there on the edge somewhere you should find Benny Henge and this is the artist's last gift to the world normally you can loot this body but it looks like somebody's already beat me to it today but you can normally pick up a nice cracked helmet and some other bits and bobs and that's it that's all i've got that was a bonus clip but thanks very much for watching remember like and subscribe 07 guys <laughs>